Okay, good evening, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us tonight for the Criminal Criminology at Bloomberg webinar. For those of you who have joined us, please just make sure that you have muted your microphones. Um, there's no need to have that on. If you do have any questions throughout the webinar, please feel free to pop that in the chat box below. You can actually ask us a question privately, or if you'd like everyone to benefit from your question, you can address it to everyone as well. So my name is Kirsty, and I am a student advisor here at Flinders. So it's sort of my job to help you figure out if Flinders is right for you, talk about all of the courses that we have on offer and how you can gain entry into those courses. Um, and I'm very delighted to have Angela Melville join this evening as well. Um, Angela is a senior lecturer in our Bachelor of Criminology program and fortunately knows a lot more about the degree than I do. So she's going to speak to you about the program that we have at Flinders this evening. Um, as I said, if you've got any questions throughout, let us know and we'll either get back to you during the webinar or after the session individually. So thank you, Angela, I'll pass over to you. Thank you. So um, I'm also the Teaching Program Director for Criminology, so this is this is my thing. Great. There shouldn't be anything I wouldn't be able to answer. Um, so first of all, let's, let's talk about what is criminology. Now, we have a lot of people who are interested in criminology because they love crime shows. Yeah, I'm guilty of that. <laughs> <laughs> Your favourite crime show? Uh, probably Criminal Minds. Uh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> I was always working at BAU. When I asked this at Open Day, a lot of NCIS, very uh, old school. Uh, uh, mine is Killing Eve, which I think says oh, something about me. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, so we have a lot of students going, yes. Um, criminology is going to be like CSI. I'm going to go out there and I'm going to be a crime scene investigator. Um, and I don't want to put you off, but it's not like that. Sorry. Sorry. All right. I'm, I'm now, <laughs> the problem with the TV shows is they ask small questions. Who committed the crime? And in criminology, we ask the much bigger questions. So we're looking for, we're looking for trends in crime. So why do people commit crimes? What are the patterns in crime? How can crime be prevented? How does the criminal justice system work? How can it be improved? Uh, so for instance, uh, Mark Halsey is, is one of our researchers and his work is with intergenerational prisoners in prison. Mm -hmm. So here we have a situation where we've got the grandfather's been in prison, the father's in prison, and now the son's in prison. So his questions are, how does that happen? How do you get intergenerational imprisonment? And then how do you stop it? Um, how do you prevent that um, from happening? So that's what we do. That is criminology. It's the big questions. Okay, so that's why I study criminology. Why do it at Flinders? Um, and we are the biggest program in South Australia. We're the oldest program in, in South Australia. I will introduce you in a second to some of our teachers. So we have award-winning teachers. And we also have some internationally recognised criminologists, people like Mark Halsey's work in, in prisons, for instance. So let's meet some of the folk. This is David Bright. Um, David's research is into criminal networks, and that's what he teaches. So last year, David's criminal networks um, course won the... Vice Chancellor's um, Award for the best teacher um, oh, wow. at the university. And his stuff is, it looks at how criminal networks get set up. So these are, say, illicit drug networks or um, terrorist cells. Um, how do those networks change over time? And then if you're going to bring down a criminal network, who are the most vulnerable targets? Mm -hmm. So if you're Interpol or you're the federal police, who do you need to, to go and find and how do you find them? So that's what he teaches, criminal networks, which is cool. Very cool. I think that's something that's quite different between like school, for example, oh, if yeah. you've got a, a lot of year 12 leavers who are watching us this evening and uni is that the people like who Angela is talking about right now who are researching all of these extremely fascinating areas that's what they're then teaching yeah. to you as well. So they're researchers and teachers. So David's not here at the moment. He's in Europe, I think. Ooh. He's over, um, I think he's in Belgium. Um, <laughs> um, so he's off at some sort of international conference. 
uh, oh, with yeah. stakeholders um, discussing networking. Uh, this is uh, Marinella Mabo. So last year, she won the um, Australian and New Zealand Criminology Association's prize for the best teacher in Australia in criminology. And she got that for her topic on international criminal justice. So she's interested in sort of the, the globalisation of crime. So sex trafficking, um, for instance, um, drug running. Um, things that go across borders. Um, so again, an internationally recognised expert and she's teaching from of her, her own research. So we have um, some of the best teachers and some of the, the best researchers around. Okay, so these are the sorts of things we do as researchers. We have specialised um, people in organised crime. Um, we have somebody who, who specialises in dark tourism. What is dark tourism? Uh, so, for instance, if you go to Berlin and you have the Holocaust um, oh, Memorial. yes, okay. So how are they set up? Why do people go and visit? Yeah, why are people so yeah, fascinated? Yeah, why, why are people so fascinated? Yeah, exactly. Um, drug trafficking, gun crime, um, my stuff's in domestic violence, policing, corruption, corrections, victimisation. So not only are we researchers, so we're not just academic researchers, um, our research is... Um, particularly characterised by the sort of impact that we make, that real world impact. So I've, for instance, done a lot of policy research. So my earlier research um, um, changed domestic violence um, legislation, um, first in Victoria and then right across Australia. Um, it goes into, it feeds into training for judges and magistrates in Australia and then recently has been picked up by the European Union. Um, and I've had recent research that's changed um, domestic violence and family law um, in England and Wales. So we do stuff that that has a real impact. So yeah. we're not just academics. Um, most of us do stuff that really makes a change. And that's why we've gone into it. Yeah. You know. Yeah, we've got the people. <laughs> <laughs> we've gone into it because we've had a passion about, about um, social justice. And we've gone into it because we really want to make a difference. Yeah. So the questions that Mark is asking, for instance, how do you stop intergenerational um, imprisonment? They're really difficult questions. Yeah. So that's what we do. Now, one of the tough question. This one. <laughs> <laughs> well, a lot of our first year students turn up thinking they're going to go into policing, that they're going to be a cop. And there's nothing wrong with that. No. Um, absolutely nothing wrong with that. I've got two um, um, police who are doing PhDs. So, um, However, my advice would be think big. You know, we ask those big questions and think big. Um, you never really know where you're going to go. Mm. So my research, I started off in Australia. Um, I worked in, in Sydney for a while at the Justice Research Centre as a researcher. I moved to England um, where I did quite a lot of legal aid work, um, research with the, um, the UK government, did a lot of research in Scotland. Uh -huh. I then moved to Spain. Oh, cool. <laughs> where you guys could end up. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then I, 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 came, I came back to Australia and I never, as a first year student, conceptualised never had any idea of where my life wow. could take me. So a criminology degree will open doors, but you may not even know what those doors are. So my advice would be, you know, to think big. We have we have um, graduates um, who do victim support services. Um, we There's quite a lot of work coming up in crime analysis. Um, and I teach um, data analysis skills. I'm very interested in predictive algorithms and things that are going to come up. So we're interested in, in those sort of future skills. You can do policing. Um, you can do a combined degree, and I'll talk about that in a second. So you can go into forensics or, or into psychology. Um, because of that real world impact that we do, um, a lot of our students go into policy. Okay. Um, so we have a lot of connections and, and so we have a lot of graduates moving into that policy field where they're making a difference. Uh, juvenile justice is a growing area. And then we have um, topics in cybersecurity, uh, et cetera. So that's sort of counterintelligence. 
that would surely be a quite a big area with all you know, oh, the technology yeah. Yeah. and things like that. So we're quite interested in how that new tech yeah. is changing things. Now this is um, <laughs> this is Anne. She's one of my students. Uh, so she's one of our second year students. Uh, she's also one of our mentors. Okay. So starting in first year is intimidating. I can yes. still remember that. Me too. <laughs> <laughs> um, so and we know that. Yeah. Definitely. So what we have is a is a um, mentoring system for our first year. So all of our first years are matched to a second and or third year, or sometimes oh, right. an honest student who's okay. a mentor who can show you the ropes. Okay, someone who's been through it themselves. Yeah. Yeah. And all of those questions: Where is my lecture theatre? What is a tutorial? What am I meant to do with this assessment? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> where is the hub? <laughs> all of those questions that you just think I'm I I don't want to look stupid. Uh, <laughs> yeah, exactly. I remember that feeling. I still feel like that sometimes. So we have our mentors, and the reason my aunt is a mentor yeah. is because she was really helped in her first year. Uh, uh, so by she wanted to give year. back. Um, she is also our education officer for our Flinders University ah. Criminology Association. So we also have our Crim Association. So they've got a um, a tour, a ghost tour of the jail coming up. Oh wow! Uh, cool. They run career sessions. They do a lot of student consultation with us. So I get feedback from yeah. students. Uh, they did pub call last week. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry if you're underage. <laughs> so one of the ways that you get through your university. Um, all the research suggests that the more you know people, the bigger your support group, the more oh, you feel absolutely. at home, the more likely you are to go well, yeah. particularly in first year. Yes. So we have a very active student association. We have our, our mentors, you know, and we know our students. Yeah. Um, we are quite concerned, particularly with first year, that the learning is scaffolded. It's not, we do not have any 100% exam topics. Okay. We don't have anything that's crash and burn. Um, so <laughs> in first year, it's, it's not like, you know, when I was studying a thousand years ago, it was just <laughs> exam, <laughs> nothing else. So we, we have scaffolded learning. So you'd have a, an initial first topic, ah. um, a, a small assessment to get a feel for it. Yeah. Um, so so we eased into it. Eased into it. it. Yeah. Lovely. And then um, what will I study? So here, here's a bit of a pick and mix of some of the things that you can do. Um, and so cybersecurity is our new topic coming on board next year. We have a new member of staff. Um, so we've got international criminal justice, that's Marinella's um, network, so that's David's, but we also have topics of organised crime, the Italian mafia, um, crime law and trauma, that's by Derek, so that's that sort of dark tourism. Yeah, I've got that one twice. Um, terrorism and society, that's taught um, by uh, um, outside of CRIM, but you can see that we do um, some other topics as well. Violent crime, we have people who, with a specialty in violent crime, particularly gun crime. Mm -hmm. So there's there's a there's quite a, a selection there. So many applications. And are these all elective topics that students Some can are choose electives. From? Policing and society is a core. Okay. Um, core topic means you have to do to that do topic. It. You when have you're to do here. it. Violent crime is a core, um, and I think most of the others are going to be electives. Great. So you would also, in first year, we have a, a um, core topic that's on criminology theory, oh, yeah. a core topic that's on um, the justice system, um, and a core topic that's on um, law and society. And okay. then you have options. So history's killing fields is a first year option. Oh, great. So many different applications of it. Oh, yeah. Okay. You can do honours, and we have a direct pathway into honours. So if you have the ATAR, I'm oh, good on you. <laughs> <laughs> you can go directly into the pathway. But it's not how most of our students um, okay. go into honours. So for the most of our students, um, they get into third year, and then if they have a high enough GPA in CRIM topics, um, then they will get an offer. And usually we, you know, we don't wait until their third year. Yeah. You know, if they're in second year and I'm thinking, oh, this is a this is a good student, yeah. Yeah. we do a bit of shoulder tapping. Oh, great. Um, okay. And we have extra opportunities. So I have I have a research assistant who's one yeah. of our graduate, one of our undergraduates. Ah, oh, um, yes. So that's a great role. Yeah. Yeah. And I've student. published with some of my students. Oh wow. Um, and I'll publish with Marcus. 
Yeah. Um, so you can get into honours then in your, after your, your third year. Yeah. And that's the way most students get into honours. Um, and then honours involves um, some coursework, but then an independent research project. Yeah. Um, so it's your chance then to choose something you really want to follow up on. And some of that might be, well, this is what I'm interested in. Sometimes it's because we have an opportunity. So my one of my honours students last year had a project through Safehold, through the police. Oh, yeah. And she was looking at driver, um, people who drive off from service stations without paying for fuel. Oh, interesting. <laughs> um, and, you know, we were running around Adelaide taking photos <laughs> of different, different <laughs> service stations. Very hands on very <laughs> hands. <laughs> Um, and then one of the features of our honours project is it also has work placements. That's great. That's quite unique, I yeah. think. So we have um, a student um, who did honours um, placement at the Victim Support Service, and that's where oh, he's now working. Great. Um, so I've had students out, out at SAPOL. Um, we've recently had a student with the... Um, courts administration. Yeah. Um, he was doing a pro an evaluation there of um, domestic violence orders, oh, um, yeah. whether they're effective. Um, we've had quite a number of students with the Aboriginal Drug and Alcohol Council, etc., yeah. etc. Cetera, et cetera. Um, and so our top students then we're putting them into placements, um, and that gives you a step up. You know, a lot oh, of those yeah, students stay um, with those services. Yeah, it helps you get jobs afterwards and meet people who might yeah. know you. <laughs> yeah, exactly. With the honours um, option, Angela, if, if someone was, I just get this question quite a lot from students, if someone was in the honours stream and then they got to the end of third year and they perhaps had a job opportunity come up or something, are you bound to doing that honours year? No, of course not. Get out? So, so that's that's exactly what I did. Yeah. Um, I Initially, I deferred um, and then I actually changed. Oh, okay. I, I, I'm Tasmanian and so I had an offer from the University of Tasmania, um, but then I moved. Um, oh, okay. And my life completely changed, and I yeah. did honours elsewhere. But you can defer, yeah, um, or you know you can change your mind, and you can always change your mind. If you start in criminology, or you start any program, mm -hmm. you do the first semester, and you think, no, oh, it's not for me. And it's so common as well yeah. for some people. I mean, not leaving criminology, everyone loves that, so they stay in the degree. But <laughs> <laughs> I changed degrees when I got to uni and a lot of people do. Sometimes you have to start something to sort of find your yeah. feet and figure out what you like. And it's it's quite easy to do that at Flinders yes. without penalty. Yes. So if you, you know, I know that there's stress, particularly when you're in high school, to be making decisions about your future very early. Yeah. But we stress to people that's not what we do. Work out what you're interested in, where you want to go, and then if it's somewhere else, it's perfectly fine. Mm. I, I started in law. I got there. The, you go, <laughs> exhibit A. <laughs> so <did I. laughs> and it, it 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 wasn't for me. Yes. Um. Yeah. So I I changed, and and that's fine. And look where you are now. Yeah. There you go. Um. So if you make a decision now, yeah. you you know you're not you're not um you're not. It's Locked not your destiny. Forever. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and we, we have we have people who would have got into our honours program, go away and do stuff and then come back. Yeah. You know, we're Great. always happy go. to see them. Yeah. Um, now, the other feature of our program is we have combined degrees. So you can do a straight Bachelor of Criminology degree, um, but you can also do combined. So you can combine it with psychology, um, you can combine it with information technology, and that's got a real focus on cybersecurity. Yeah. Um, you can combine it with the Bachelor of Science for Forensics. Great. Yeah, that's quite so, a popular one yeah. from what I've been hearing. <laughs> yeah, the popularity is growing. Um, and you can combine it with law. Fantastic. And then if you combine it, then you have all the opportunities that would come with criminology, but it opens all of those other yes. additional doors as well. Wow. And something on that I just want to mention because I get this question a lot from students as well. If you're in a combined degree, it doesn't mean that you are studying or that you have a much harder degree than the other person. No. You still do four topics if you're a full-time student, for example. Um, it just means that you're studying for longer. So it just means that you're at university, say, for five or six years instead of, um, you know, three or four years. You still do the same study load as another yeah. student who would just be doing a single and degree. And it's not considerably longer so it's not no. a double degree it's not yeah. I'll do one degree and then do a second degree mm. so they're combined and the way that we keep that combination is you may lose some of the options yes 
So you might have to do some more of the psychology um, instead of having, say, other options in criminology. Yeah. Um, and then that way we can bring those two together without adding a considerable amount of time. Great. Um, and then the psychology degree and the law degree, the combination is also accredited. Yes. So you don't come out with less. Yeah. So it's sort of a two-in-one. Um, and it gives you – and, again, you know, you might – you might start off in, in a combined degree and go, I don't like that combination. I'm yeah. just going to do criminology. That's what I did too. <laughs> I dropped half of mine and yeah. went with the other. Yeah. And, and you know, as the teaching program director, then I would get a study plan and go, okay, yeah. well, how, how, are we going to, how are we going to handle that? So there's always that degree of flexibility. Yeah. Um, right. So we have those combined degrees and they are popular. Mm. Okay, now applications is you. Open. Me, yes. So applications are open at the moment through SATAC, so that's the South Australian Tertiary Admissions Centre. Many of you may already have an application in, as you might have received that email that we sent out to those of you who have applied. So thank you for including us as a preference in your application. If you've not yet applied, or fully submitted your application, we really recommend you do so by Monday the 30th of September, just because after that date, there's quite a hefty late fee that's attached to the application. So you just want to avoid that one. But keep in mind, you can actually continue adding on or changing your preferences around well up until month, uh, Wednesday the 18th of December. So you still have that flexibility to change your preferences around. If you're really unsure and you are constantly changing your preferences, please get in touch with our team. I've got our contact details coming up in a moment. Um, we can help provide you with advice about how to get into criminology um, and how you should be listing your preferences because it's not every day that you have to list an order of, you know, what you want to do for the next few years. It can be a really daunting task. So please get in touch with us and we can help you. That's what we're there for. Um, if you are interested in postgraduate study, you can also apply through SATAC. The reason we've included that here is because the Bachelor of Criminology is also available as a, what's called Bachelor of Letters. That's mm. something that we haven't actually spoken about yet this evening. And what that means is that if you're joining us this evening as a graduate of another degree, so like if I wanted to study criminology after hearing about how fantastic the course is, I could apply for something called a Bachelor of Letters and complete a major in criminology in just one year um, and applications through that. You could actually also, if you've already got a degree, you yeah. could apply for a Master's of Letters oh, as well. Oh, there you go. We're so all we learning post, tonight. Postgraduate. Um, and then, of course, um, you could do a postgraduate research degree. Oh, okay. Um, so a, a PhD, for yeah. example. Oh, wow, there's so many options. Yeah. So if we do have any um, graduates of other course areas with us this evening, there's, as you heard, there's quite a few options. So do get in touch with us if you have any further questions um, this evening. That is our team's contact details. So feel free to screenshot this if you'd like to get in touch with us um, or you can visit our website. We do have a number of other webinars that are coming up over the next few weeks in areas like health sciences or criminology, that's happening right now, and sport, health and physical activity and some other more generic information. So if you're wanting to know about pathways or scholarships and things like that, um, head to that link that's on the page now and you can sign up for other webinars as you did this evening. Uh, if you've got any more questions, you can still pop them into the chat box after the webinar and um, I'll get in touch with you. And I'd just like to thank Angela for joining us this evening. I understand you're a very busy woman, so I really appreciate you taking that time <laughs> after hearing everything that you've accomplished. Um, thanks so much for joining us, everyone, and all the best for the rest of your studies for those of you who are in Year 12. And hopefully I'll see you see you at yes. Orientation Week and our week in um, before the semester starts, we run a mentoring session yeah. where you get to meet your mentors. Excellent. I'll Actually, be before we do wrap it up, we've just got a question that we'll briefly oh. answer that it might be good for um, the other people in the room about yes. travel during the degree. Yes, you can. Um, so... Um, you can travel for all Flinders yes. universities degrees. Yes, yeah, so absolutely. we have about 180 partner universities that you can organise exchanges through. I did one myself in my degree and it was fantastic. It was just a short term one because I left it a bit too late and then panicked. And so I did a short term one, which was brilliant. Um, so broadly speaking, there are a lot of different opportunities. Do you have many students in criminology that... Um, yes, we certainly do. I had, I had a student at the University of Amsterdam last semester. Right. Um, 
And so you can study abroad, um, but we also have additional options. There's um, internships. Um, oh, okay. So um, one of our students, he spent he spent summer um, in um, in Brussels with the EU. Wow. Um, and then there's internal stuff. So um, yes. some of our students will do an internship at the Australian Institute of Criminology in Canberra, for instance. Oh wow! Um, so yeah, there are there's quite a lot of additional um, yeah. opportunities. That's right, and that's the thing with universities. There's so many other opportunities, including in travel and just in other areas as well. It's just a matter of putting your hand up for it and finding what's out there. So thank you very much for that question. Sorry for tacking that on the end there, but probably something everyone would benefit from hearing. Um, so thank you everyone and good luck for the rest of your studies.